Hello crafters, Nicole here, and I'm glad to have you watching along as I share two new projects with you. With graduation season right around the corner, I decided to pull out some sketches from the archive to create two graduation cards that don't require any stamping. I'll be using that fantastic poured acrylic paper in both projects, one more masculine and one more feminine. Welcome to Sketch Starters with Nicole. <music> The first sketch I pulled out is this one here with those wonderful vertical strips. I'm going to ignore that smaller center box and go for something a bit more dramatic. For my supplies, I'll be using the Elegant Foil Stripe Washi, Port Acrylic 6x6 Paper, Essential Sentiment Strips Die, Mod Squares Embossing Folder, and the Swirl Motif Embossing Folder. My first step is to add some texture to a few of these pieces. So I've taken a piece of jet black cardstock and I will emboss it with the swirl motif. And this little strip of dark gray, I will emboss with the mod squares embossing folders. With the embossing completed, I went ahead and added that background piece to my card base. So that is ready to go and it's looking dramatic already. So I pulled out a few pieces of scraps that I have from the poured acrylic paper pack and I wanna keep this in a nice black and white look. So my first step is to add in one of those vertical strips. And I noticed that the card stock is a little bit on the thin side since it's that double-sided pattern paper. And with the deep embossing, I wanted to make sure that I didn't have any wonkiness going going on. So here I'm just cutting a scrap of white cardstock and this is actually the 100 pound weight that I like to use for my card bases and I'm adding a shim on the back side of the piece of pattern paper. This is going to help it to stay level with the embossed piece of black behind it and that will give me a nice firm foundation for the rest of the pieces. So once I have this in place, you can see that it's gonna cover up a little bit of that embossing, but that's gonna get that whole layered look going on. And then I've got my piece in place. So for my second strip, I'm going to add in a piece of this amazing washi tape. I like that it's got some black on the background instead of white. That helps kind of keep that whole black and white theme going on without a really stark contrast. So I simply added in that piece of washi tape and now I'm gonna go ahead and glue on the third layer here, which is that strip that I embossed with the other embossing folder. So this really kind of finishes up that entire look for me. So when you look at the sketch, you'll see that I've got all of my vertical layers all lined up and looking just like the sketch without that extra box around it. The last thing I needed to do on this card is actually just add in the sentiment, which I die cut from the Essential Sentiment Strips die set. So this is just in some white cardstock. And again, because I'm dealing with the embossing on the left side of the card, what I've done here is just added a foam square to the right side. And on the left side, I'm going to add in a shim or two of cardstock. And this is gonna give the appropriate height so that my sentiment doesn't end up all wonky. So just add a little drop of glue and then go ahead and add a piece of cardstock and then I'll trim off the edge here and check it to see if it looks right and maybe I need to add in another shim. So eventually here I will add in a second shim and then this card will actually be complete for the moment. The styling of this card is so versatile because I can just swap out different colors and have a completely different look for every recipient. I can coordinate these to match with school colors or with the favorite colors of the proud graduate. And because there's no stamping, I can work up a handful of these in no time. Are you enjoying this video? Then how about giving it a thumbs up? I'd really appreciate it. Moving on to the second design, I pulled out yet another sketch and I'm gonna flip this one so that it's landscape instead of portrait. And again, I have removed that extra background layer so it's just a single layer plus the elements. Although I am gonna go a little mixed media this time. For this project, I'll be using the Essential Sentiment Strips dies and the poured acrylic paper again, but I'll be adding in the halftone stencils, nesting dies, as well as the feeling dotty stencil. With the stencil, I'll be using some embossing paste and a little bit of ink in the background. Now I'm not stamping, I'm just ink blending. To start off this project, I'm going to start with the background. So I have my Rubolite ink here with a large ink blender and I'm just going to add some blushing in the background here. 
adding in another layer of color really helps to bring more depth to the blush paper behind it. And then when I add the dots on top with the embossing paste, it's really going to help those pop. So now that I have my blending complete, you'll see that there is a little bit of a mess up there, but that's actually going to get covered, so I'm totally not worried. So I've taken my stencil and I'm going to go ahead and add in some plain embossing paste in white. And that is going to provide me with a really cool textured background for the rest of this project. If I didn't have this textured background, I think the project would look pretty plain. So this is a really great foundation for the rest of, of the elements. While I wait for the background to dry, I'm going to work out these circular elements. Conveniently, my mat has the A2 size templates on them, so I'm going to use that to do the layout. I've got my round pieces already cut out in the acrylic paper, and I'm going to work out some background circles to give them a little bit more heft, so they're not just these flimsy flat things that I slap onto the card. So what I'm doing here is measuring out exactly where the second die cut needs to happen. I'm going to overlap it over the existing hole from the first die cut so that way I get kind of like a crescent moon-ish shape that will cut out the overlap section and they'll fit together like a puzzle piece when I'm done. Now that I have all my pieces finished I've started assembling everything. I decided to go with a couple of different colors of paper so that way you could see just a little teeny tiny stripe of, of fun colors on the sides as they get stacked together. So I have the full circle done and now I'm going to finish assembling the crescent moon piece that's going to fit together. So I've got my second piece here and I make sure to apply enough glue so that especially the edges stick really well together and I don't have any pulling apart of this lamination. And then I'll go ahead and add on my third piece. So I have three pieces of cardstock with the poured acrylic paper on top. It makes a really nice thick piece and it's about probably a sixteenth of an inch thick. And as you can see, now I can fit them together and decide exactly how I want them to lay out. So here we are, and I've got my card base all finished. That background piece is completely dry, and I have it adhered to my card base. And I know how I want my two circular pieces to fit together. So I'll go ahead and adhere my first piece, and that goes on it's super simple. I just need to make sure that I leave enough room for the second piece, and I have it angled just the right way. So there we go. I'll go ahead and add that first one on and press it just for a second so that it really adheres down on top of that embossing paste. And then the second one will go right in place, just like a perfect puzzle piece. So those two pieces are in place. And then I just need to add on my sentiment. And this time I'm not doing any popping up since those round pieces are popped up already. And I'm going to go ahead and just adhere this across the two. And that's going to unify the look. So after I finished both cards, I decided that since they're graduation cards, they really do need a little bit of bling. So I pulled out some sequins and some enamel dots. On the pink card, I'm going to add in the satin gold sequins. And you know, I always like to do these in little groups of three. And I decided to keep the sequins on top of the circles. So all of that is self-contained. There's lots of dots going on here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just glue those three down. And that really does take this card up just that extra bit that really makes it pop. For the second card I'll go ahead and add in some of the enamel dots and I decided to go for the second darkest ones. I really wanted something that would pop against the black but not be too stark to compete with the white. So again I like to pair the largest and the smallest together and do the medium one offset and in this case I did kind of almost a, an angled line with the two. It's a very very slim triangle but in the end gorgeous results. So there you have it, two quick, simple, no stamp cards for graduates. I hope you enjoyed both of these projects and when you decide to recreate them for yourself, don't forget to share them out on social media and tag at Pixel Mavens Retreat and at Alta New LLC. We always love to see what you're creating with these sketches. Thank you so much for spending a part of your day with me. I'll be back soon with more crafty inspiration, but until then, happy crafting. Hello crafters, Jen here. 
For more tips, techniques, tutorials, and to discover which paper crafting products are right for you, subscribe to Altenew's YouTube channel. Make sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. Thanks for watching!